ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the manapuram finance q2 fy24 earnings conference call hosted by motilal oswal financial services limited as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr abhijit deprewal from motilal oswal financial services limited thank you and over to you sir yeah thank you sagar uh, good evening everyone welcome to the earning call of manipur finance we have with us today the senior management of manipur finance represented by mr vp nand kumar md and ceo dr sumita nandan executive director ms bindu el CFO, Mr. B. N. Ravindra Babu, M. D. Ashirwad, Mr. Rajesh Lambu Ji Prasad, CFO, Mr. Kamal Parmar, Head Vehicle and Equipment Finance, Mr. Suveen P. S., CEO Manapuram Home Finance, Mr. Robin Karuvelli, CFO Manapuram Home Finance, and Mr. Baswaraj Chetty, Senior VP and Head IR, Ashirwad. I now hand over the mic to Mr. Nand Kumar and other members of the senior management for their opening remarks. Post which uh, we can open the floor for an attractive Q and A. Thank you, I know what you said. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the conference call for the second quarter of FH24 financial. It gives me immense pleasure in presenting our results. when india is continuing the growth momentum despite global uncertainty and geopolitical tension while imo has downgraded global gdp growth by a notch in its last outlook india's growth has been revised upward in this backdrop of an optimistic environment I present before you for Q2 FY24 financial a balanced and prudent growth strategy, which I have been reiterating for many quarters, is now going in full swing. In this quarter, we have achieved good growth in both AEM and profitability with a consolidated base. I am happy to share that we have recorded a net profit of 561 crore, with an improvement of 37 percent year on year, driven by profitability in gold loan and microfinance business. Gold loan AEM was 20,809 crore. an improvement of 8.4% over the over the year ago quarter and 1% of sequential we have maintained the pricing discipline in a very competitive environment and improved upon the profitability we are committed to maintain the momentum on the gold loan business while Standard loan AEM of the NTT at 26,696 crore grew by 20.2 percent year on year. The consolidated AEM has reached 38,950 crore, representing an increase of 27 percent over a year ago quarter. Asset quality. If standalone book is comfortable at an NBA of 1.56 percent, companies microfinance subsidiary Ashirwad has posted an AEM of 10,950 crore, recording a growth of 43 percent year on year and a profit of 118 crore, which is up by. 109% year on year both in the gold loan sector as well as microfinance unmet credit needs are huge and therefore there is enough head 
room to coexist for all players, whether it be banks, NBFCs, or fintechs. Continuing with the trend in the previous quarter, we have posted a maximum growth in the vehicle finance business, a recording 66.7% increase year on year, with an AEM of 3,143 crore, followed by home loan with an AEM of 1,305 crore, facing 41.6% increase over the corresponding quarter in FIG3. For the vehicle finance business, we are increasing the penetration in rural and semi urban locations apart from using digital lending platforms and automated approval processes. MSME and personal loan segments are another area where we want to increase our presence by increasing the number of branches. And uh, as of now, we are making a steady process. As mentioned earlier, the strategy of diversifying into other sectors is gaining pace. The share of non-gold vertical in our total assets under management now stands at 47% and is in line with the objective of achieving a 50-50 portfolio mix between gold and non-gold segments. Given the strong growth in AEM and excellent earnings, the board is happy to announce an increase in dividend and raising payout to 85 pesos per day during this quarter. We are confident of achieving both top line and bottom line growth. As we continue to maintain a comfortable liquidity position by keeping the cost of funds reasonable. For a more comprehensive review of our financial performance, I hand the floor to our CFO, Mrs. Bidu Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you all for joining us. As you are aware of, Ashirwad Microfinance filed DRHP on October 5, 2023. We are not in a position to give more numbers for Ashirwad except those which are in the public domain relating to results. We request our participants to restrict their questions on Ashirwad to published numbers. Coming to the operational overview, our consolidated AEM was rupees 38,950 crores representing 5.1% sequential growth and 27% YOY growth. Consolidated profit after tax was rupees 561 crore, which was up by 12.6% QONQ and 37% increase YOY. ROE on a consolidated basis was 21.6% and ROA was 5.3%. Our leverage is currently at three times. Cash and cash equivalents on a consolidated basis was rupees 4,871 crore and undrawn bank line was rupees 4,253 crore. Our CT exposure is 2.9 percentage in the standalone entity. Standalone cost of borrowing has gone up by 21 basis points during the quarter. About the gold loan business, which constitutes 53 percentage of the consolidated AEM, there is the remaining 47 percentage comprises microfinance, vehicle finance, housing, and MSME finance. Gold loan AEM at rupees 20,809 crore, an increase of Q on Q1 percentage, and up by 8.4 percentage YOY. And the number of live customers stood at 24.63 lakh. During the quarter, we were able to add 4.03 lakh new customers. Our average LTV is 66 percentage. Online book accounts for 56% of the total gold loan book. Our standalone fat was rupees 420 crore, up by 10.2% sequentially and up by 20.4% YOY. 
our stand alone pad for the half year was rupees 801 crore up by 25.4 percent by a by coming to the microfinance business ashirwad microfinance aum stands at rupees 10950 crore including gold loan aum of rupees 815 crore up by 8 percent q on q and up by 43 percent by a by pad for the MFI business has increased to two rupees hundred and eighteen crore in Q two FI twenty four versus rupees hundred and eleven crore in Q one FI twenty four. For the half year, the profit increased to two rupees two hundred and thirty crore versus forty eight crore in the last year. The NPA stands at one point four four percent, and the CRAR at twenty four point four seven percent. Vehicle finance. We have reported an AAM of rupees three thousand one hundred and forty-three crore, which is up by thirteen percentage Q on Q and up by sixty-six point six percentage by a by. ROA for the business is around one point five percentage for this quarter. Collection efficiency hundred percentage. GNPA reduced to two two point five percentage. Home loan business with a book of rupees one thousand three hundred and five crore. Q on Q growth of eight point five percentage. 41 percent is by by growth, operating from 65 branches and reported a profit of 4.5 crore. ROA at 1.4 percent is collection efficiency 96 percent is and GNPA 1.75 percent is. Loan to MSME and allied businesses rupees 2,639 crore and the ROA 2.2 percent is. Collection efficiency 96 percent is and GNP at 1.9 percent is. Lending to NBFC is AM stands at rupees 920 crore. ROA is around 5 percent is during the quarter. Provisions and write-offs for the standalone entity during the quarter stood at rupees 31 crore compared to rupees 21 crore in the previous quarter. Our capital position is strong and the company is capitalized at a capital adjusted ratio of 30.7 percent is. And the console network stands at rupees ten thousand five hundred and seventy-two crore, and the book value at rupees one twenty-four point nine zero. Thank you. Now we can go for the Q and A session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue. You may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of a Piran engineer from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my question and congrats on the strong uh, numbers. Uh, just a few questions. Firstly, we did an assignment this quarter. What exactly was it? Like we were assigned gold loans or uh, vehicle or other loan? Uh, so we did assignment for uh, MSME and vehicle finance book uh, to banks. Okay. And how, what percentage of the book did we sell down? Like what is the quantum of sell down rather? So we did in the earlier quarter also put together it is around 700 crore. It is the normal standard book, which uh, is also line of um, liquidity. Okay, but w uh, why are we doing this when our tier one is at 30 percent? Yeah, so we uh, we should have we have to maintain the relationship with the bank. So sometimes uh, uh, this will help them to meet their PSL requirements also. Uh, so it is not uh, very big. Uh, so sometimes we have to do that. We have to open uh, different line of uh, sourcing. Gold loan to some extent uh, uh, assignment uh, is not possible. But as we are into non-gold businesses, we are opening up these lines also. Got it. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, secondly, 
uh, I notice in the uh, standalone and console statements are, you know, employee expense has gone down, uh, but the other expenses have gone up a lot. So have we moved some employees to off-roll or something like that? No. So the reduction in the employee cost on account of, uh, uh, it depends on the growth asset quality. So sometimes uh, we will give the more weightage to asset quality like that. So to some extent, it is on account of reduction in uh, incentives. Um, otherwise, the number of employees we are adding based on the employee productivity. Um, admin expenses, uh, we had to add the uh, communication uh, lines more to the branch, etc. Those were the reasons. Got it, got it. And just lastly, uh, you can give some broad comments on the gold loan space in terms of uh, you know, competitiveness of the environment because we're seeing you all are able to pass on 50 bips of yield hike this quarter. Uh, Muthut, on the other hand, had to shed yields by about 40, 50 bips. So just overall how the environment is in terms of competitive scenario, both on growth and pricing, that would be helpful. So as I mentioned in the opening remark, we want to maintain the price discipline at around 22 per percent plus. And uh, yeah, the, we be believe that uh, the market also will gradually realize that the uh, PPS also will gradually realize the need because the funding cost uh, yeah, is uh, going up and uh, the trend is uh, not reversed now. So uh, that's our policy. And uh, yeah, we expect the coming quarters to be uh, to remain good as far as gold loan is concerned. That's the usual scenario. So, but are, are banks being as aggressive as they used to be, or less aggressive? Have you seen that competition taper down? So yeah, when they're uh, yeah, credit growth uh, goes up. And uh, yeah, their credit deposit uh, growth is a take uh, is a uh, yeah, and they are comfortable. Naturally, their preference for small ticket loans will come down, and that is happening now. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, I have more questions, but I'll get back in the queue. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of. Subranchu Mishra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Just uh, uh, some data keeping questions. Uh, if you can uh, spell out what was the percentage of AEM less than uh, three months of tenor as a percentage of the book, and if we can split the book into uh, less than one lakh, one lakh to three lakh, and uh, three lakh and above. And uh, what was the auction uh, number this quarter? And uh, if we can get the weighted average LTV in rupees. Thanks. The auction it is 15 crore last quarter. On the LTV percentage, 66 percentage on 5,300 rupees. Uh, uh, say that again, 5,300? Gold price, 66 percentage average LTV. In rupees, sir, what was it? Yeah, we'll come back. On the uh, portfolio breakup, uh, we have up to 1 lakh uh, 44 percentage. Uh, 1 to 5 lakh, we have breakup like that. 1 to 5 lakh 41 percentage, and balance uh, 1 to 5 lakh 15 percentage. Uh, okay. And uh, what was this? Uh, and. Uh, 3,500 rupees in rupee terms. 3,500? Well, understood, sir. And sir, uh, what has been the accrued interest uh, in this quarter versus uh, last quarter, sir? 3.7% for the quarter. Uh, okay. Similar okay. in the same, same level. Understood, understood. And ma'am, if we can give out the uh, split of the book uh, uh, last quarter as well, one lakh uh, less than one lakh, one to five lakh and uh, five lakh and above. We'll send you separately. 
Okay, man. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. The, the, these are all my questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Pratik Kothari from Unique PMS. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening and thank you. Uh, so my first question on the microfinance side, I mean, uh, our expectation was the credit cost, uh, we did some write-offs last quarter and credit cost was expected to come down, uh, which we haven't seen. So anything to call out if you can highlight? See, microfinance, uh, as we filed the DRHP, we can talk only the numbers in the public domain. So uh, the quality in the book has uh, improved. Uh, so we will come back with the detail, the numbers, when we are allowed to do that. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of uh, Rati J. Pandit from Nirmal Bang Institution Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, my first question is with respect to your option surplus, which you had mentioned in the first quarter. It was around 36 crores. So has the effect uh, reduced further? And if any update uh, from RBI on the branch expansion with respect to golden branches? This is my first question. And my second question is, uh, what is your... Uh, Outlook on the gold loan, uh, uh, gold loan business growth. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, if we look at, uh, I mean, for FY24, uh, I mean, in the past uh, one or two months, uh, we all uh, have seen at a macro level, uh, I mean, if the geopolitical tensions, uh, they, if they extend a bit. Uh, so do you think that, uh, I mean, uh, there could be better chances for uh, the growth on the core business? So these are my two questions. The option surplus, as you have said, which was around 38 crores, has come down to around 30, nearly 30 crores now, and it is coming down. But the RBA is looking forward for uh, a couple of quarters, is whether we are able to bring it down, and uh, we have demonstrated that we, have, we are able to do that. And we, and I, we hope that um, the RBA will be very happy with that. And uh, um, there, there won't be any problem in getting bank permission. And regarding the gold loan opportunity, as I have said, uh, yeah, we are maintaining the price discipline at around the 22% plus. That is our, um, yeah. With that, um, we have got to the, the growth of 8% for your wife. And the um, coming quarters are generally good for gold loan, and uh, so we hope uh, to, to take up the advantage of that. Okay. Uh, option surplus, I'm sorry, how much you said? You said it has come down, so... Uh, uh, you so will, we hope, uh, yeah, it will come down by around 2 to 3 crores every quarter, um, yeah, and... Uh, it is in line with the uh, with the uh, um, with uh, the plan uh, we have shared with the uh, uh, RBA verbally. Okay, sir. Uh, yeah, that's it from from my side. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of uh, Mona Ketan from Dalit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. So, firstly, uh, on the MFI book, uh, while we have seen a 8% sequential growth, if I look at the revenue of, of from operations on slide 21, it has declined Q on Q. So, what explains that? So, if you uh, see the uh, DA income, uh, it depends on how much... Uh, uh, direct assignment transactions so we are done during the quarter. Uh, so if you compare uh, Q1, we have done a larger amount of DA and our upfronting of income was 65 crore, uh, which re which uh, reduced to 20, 28 crore during the quarter. Uh, other than that, the yield has uh, gone up, interest income has gone up. 
uh, the difference is on account of uh, less DA transition during the quarter. Got it. Uh, secondly, if you could just uh, share again the breakup of uh, loan book by ticket size up to 1 lakh and between. I just missed that. Yeah, up to 1 lakh 44 percent. 1 to 5 lakh 41. They go 5 lakh 16 lakh. Got it. And um, just finally, uh, though I understand the LGDs and the gold business are near nil, uh, if I put together the auctioning and the rise in NPA, it seems that, you know, and also the higher credit cost, it seems that uh, you are seeing rise in NPAs in this business, unlike, say, an MFI and stuff. So, so. Uh, if you could highlight what you are seeing in the ground that is resulting in higher delinquencies in the business. So your question on the credit cost of gold loan, you are right, LDD is uh, very less. And uh, credit cost, uh, uh, during the quarter we are done option of only 15 crores and we are not incurred any loss on account of that. Right. What I wanted to understand is if anything you can highlight on why the delinquencies are higher in this business. We've seen something like this for other uh, NBFCs as well. So if you could uh, just uh, share what you're seeing on the ground, that will be helpful. See, as per contract, uh, gold loan, uh, if the customer is not ready, mean, we have the option to uh, sell the gold and recover the money before becoming NPA. Uh, but sometimes, considering the request from customers, we may uh, give some more time to the borrowers uh, as the underlying collateral and our receivable is secured. Based on the request from customers, we may um, give some more time to the customer. That is the only reason. Otherwise, for the NPA, uh, before becoming NPA also, we can sell as per the contract. Sure, thank you. I'm done, thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Rajiv Mehta from the Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, uh, congratulations on good numbers uh, and thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity. So my first question is on gold loan growth. Uh, so we are talking about pricing discipline and we have seen our yields also improving the last two quarters. Uh, so with this kind of pricing discipline, what kind of growth we can expect coming through? And uh, for that kind of a growth, what kind of actions are we taking on the ground in terms of for more advertising, your client outreach, your old client re reactivation? Can you just throw more light? Because I can see that the new customer acquisition number has been uh, pretty stable over the past few quarters. Uh, are we? Is there a plan to accelerate that number? Uh, and uh, stop the attrition? So, on an average, we are uh, acquiring around 5,000 new customers a day, day, which remains stable. And the OIOA go long growth was around 8%. And uh, we hope uh, that it will be maintained, as I mentioned uh, earlier, the coming quarter, some quarters, uh, it may be slightly dull, but in the coming quarters, uh, it may improve. So we are expecting the same momentum as far as uh, growth is concerned. And sir, when you say same momentum, are we looking at uh, annual growth of 7-8% uh, every year? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And this is without any gold price benefit? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And the same? Even when, sure. even when the gold price was down by okay. uh, yeah, to some extent, uh, the, uh, the portfolio has grown. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, on microfinance, uh, uh, ma'am, uh, if you can uh, tell us what is the collection efficiency on the X bucket, on the current bucket? Uh, so... Uh, that is what uh, the collections was similar to that of Q1, we can say. But as these numbers to be certified in future, we are not allowed to give these numbers. So, 
you can see from the uh, profit number everywhere we we can see improvement uh, but at the same time those specific numbers which will be going into the um, okay so we have to wait for that sure sure uh and just lastly again on ashirwad uh, now since that uh, we have filed the drhp for raising money and uh, it will take some time uh, and uh, we are running slightly higher on leverage uh, how how do we, how do we plan to manage growth in the interim uh, do we slow down on growth or do we do more assignments uh, in 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 the in the current quarter so our uh, ashirwad microfinance current crr at 24 percentage Uh, and uh, every crore plow back is over 100 crore profit uh, so this is uh, sufficient to support the growth for this uh, year uh, this uh, fundraising is more on account of the growth capital in the coming year okay okay so one should not expect any slowdown in momentum yeah yeah okay thank you so much for answering my questions thank you The next question is from the line of Ketan Nathopley from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I wanted to know the consolidated loan book uh, growth guidance and the credit cost guidance for FY twenty four and the next two years. Yeah, yeah. So um, whatever has been already spelled out, we remain by that. Okay, you are maintaining. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of uh, Pratik Kothari from Unique PMS. Please go ahead. Yes, hi. Thank you again, uh, uh, sir. On the MFI side again, uh, uh, we were expecting a rundown in our credit cost. We did some write-offs last quarter, and we expected that to come down. Uh, you can highlight uh, what happened this quarter. yeah so uh, the portfolio quality um, all those the specific numbers we will come when we file the urhp at this point of time uh, you can see from the uh, financials uh, so something relating to arc also we took a small uh, write off so uh, these are the broad numbers Yeah, ma'am. I'm just asking from what you have reported. So last quarter we had said that we did some 60 crores of write-off, and uh, which shouldn't continue going forward, and your credit cost should come down. But I mean, provisioning again this quarter is about 90, 92 crores. So. Uh, so if you compare I'm last quarter. Asking for any numbers, but qualitatively, uh, what is not going right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so one element of uh, P and L debit is on account of increase in AEM also. Uh, because last quarter the book was flat and uh, standard assets provision was uh, not there in the earlier quarter so this quarter the growth was there so if you compare between last quarter 96 and this quarter 91 these are the difference one is the increase in standard assets provision uh, one on account of um, uh, arc uh, provision and on the normal book uh, we are seeing improvement in asset quality Fair enough. Uh, uh, my second question on gold loan. So, uh, in a quest to maintain this 21, 22 percent yield, uh, is it fair to assume that we have let go of growth because I mean, uh, our peers maybe they have let go of yield in to capture growth, but uh, we seem to have done the reverse. So, uh, I mean, we do say that the competition has come down, but this balance between growth and yield doesn't seem to play out together. Uh, so, some comments there, if you can. Our internal decision is um, yeah, as an NBFC, we are serving a certain section of the community where the ticket price is relatively smaller, at around 50,000, and the period is the duration is around the three months, where the offer is very high and uh, the about uh, the. Borrowing costs also. Um, whatever uncertainty is there in the market, uh, yeah, that is there. So 
we believe that uh, yeah, as an NBOC, it, is, it will be always um, good to have that um, um, uh, discipline of maintaining around 22% base. And uh, we maintain that um, we expect uh, a growth of around 8 to 10% even with this because uh, the, with the coming quarters, um, from our target audience, the demand uh, is expected to uh, have some moment there. You don't want to uh, yeah, compete in the market and bring down the interest rates. Um, uh, at their level, it is not much affordable. Right. Uh, fair enough. And this uh, gain in direct assignment that we have booked of about 75 crores in H1 of this year, uh, how much was it last year or say first half of last year? So, uh, 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 in H1 or full year? H1 or... It is not in the results, net uh, gain on the revenue is low financial instruments. So half year ended, 30th September 2022 was zero. Control in the first half was zero. Okay, so we will come back with the. Yeah, we will share with you. Sure, sure. And my last question, uh, ma'am, in the last quarter we had highlighted that, uh, I mean, we didn't face any issue with funding per se, but there was some apprehension from borrowers. They were asking a few more questions with the ED issue. Now that has been solved, um, are we back to normal? in terms of credit lines, in terms of our access to liquidity, cost of capital? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, we have included in the presentation also, we are uh, having almost 4,800 crore uh, liquidity at the end of cash and cash equivalents at the end of the quarter around 5,000 crore, 4,871 crore exactly. And under all lines also. No, correct. My question was, I mean, there was some apprehensions which we were facing. So, is that all resolved or? Yes, completely resolved. Uh, mm -hmm. We got the final order and uh, even the lenders were aware uh, this is a temporary uh, issue, only the court matter, it will take some time. So, in our case, we were able to resolve everything in three, four months time uh, and uh, we are getting enough liquidity. And the pricing also, we have seen some reduction at the end of the quarter. Uh, Fair enough. Thank you and all the best. Thank you so much. Participants who wish to join the question queue, you may please, please press star and one now. The next question is from the line of Piran Engineer from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for allowing me a follow-up. Uh, just two questions. One is uh, on the cost of funds trajectory, what's our expectation both standalone and consult? Uh, and second thing, uh, just wanted to know more about your secured PL product. Uh, uh, you know, like what is the security that you all take and why does that person not just take a gold loan instead of a secured PL because the rate is same, interest rate you're charging is 21%. See, the cost of borrowing is uh, we don't expect the much increase as uh, the CFO has said. Regarding the secured PL product, this is uh, yeah, the security is a mock gauge where the margin uh, we lend up to 60 percent of the valuation of the collateral. This is a, that's the mock gauge. So your question, why we take means the gold loans are meant for short term for the, these are the, um, the average life is around 100 days or 90 days or 100 days. And the average ticket size is around 50,000. So this is the range. Uh, primarily these are seen as 
short term loan because these are some is the customers from the lower end of the pyramid where this is very precious for them and they wanted to wear for the family festivals family celebrations festivals etc whereas this uh, against this mortgage it is for 10 years so that's why the customers uh, go for the secured ps pl even though they also will sometimes go low so but then why are we not doing it from the home loan uh, subsidiary there, there also we have a lap product and what you said sounds very much like a lap product that is also 5 and a half lakh ticket size so uh, you know parent and subsidiary both are doing the same business no there is one reason there there are limitations for a home loan company uh, there are there are some limitation with regard to how much the lap can be whereas here we have okay. enough help yeah got it got it okay that answers my question thank you full portfolio is around the uh, 2500 crores now over that so got it got it okay that, that is helpful thank you sir thank you so much just a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and 1 to join the question queue The next question is from the line of Rajiv Mehta from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, sir. Uh, uh, just one, one, one follow-up uh, on on other income. Uh, sorry, on the fee income. So uh, when I look at the fee income, standalone as well as console. Uh, so on the standalone book, the fee income remains negligible. But in the console numbers, the fee income goes up to up to thirty-one crore, and this number was again very marginal number in the previous quarter. So this entire delta of fee income seems to have come from Ashirvad Microfinance. Uh, so what is this fee income? Uh, fee and commission income? Sure. Yeah. So we are getting a referral fee uh, when we are able to sell the products to the borrowers. So if they need some uh, household uh, equipment, we will be selling those products to borrowers. And what are these kinds of products? And is, is this an uh, recurring, ongoing arrangement? Uh, how should we look at uh, this business income? Yeah, uh, it will be uh, like uh, pressure cooker, gas stove, or solar, okay. small kind of uh, smaller uh, lights, etc. Okay, so these are cross sell, and uh, the quantum that we got this quarter was it? uh pertaining to this quarter or was it a pent up number or can this run rate because it's a sizable run rate in terms of our quarterly profitability uh can we expect this kind of income to uh, you know happen every quarter or is there a seasonality how should we look at this number uh, so uh, as you are aware q1 mfi disbursement was uh, slow uh, so we got some pent up demand in q2 uh, and uh, So it will continue. It may not be like uh, Q2 uh, because Q1 disbursements were slow uh, because we were waiting for the trade editing to close uh, on the liquidity issue, etc. Uh, so Q2 is not exactly comparable, but this fee income will be the coming quarter. Got it, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Utsav, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, congratulations on the great head of number, sir. I just like to inquire on the growth we can see this quarter because we have the festive season and the marriage season also. So, what kind of growth can we expect this quarter? Hello. Yeah, we are expecting a similar growth. So, like around eight, eight uh, percent in gold and. Non gold round ten fifteen percent. Why you on why growth is eight percent this gold? More than eight percent, right? Yeah, gold. Why you on why is eight percent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Q on Q is one percent. And non gold business, what kind of growth can we see this quarter, coming quarter? The same. We are expecting the same amount of growth. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Suraj 
Navander from Sampada Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Good evening. Uh, so, just wanted to understand uh, why we are doing gold loans in Asirwad Microfinance and not through our main holding company. The, the MFI came to 25% of their balance sheet in other loans, other than MFI also, they, they have the option. And it is but natural that we thought we will do secure lending. Yes, uh, the other 75 percent of the balance sheet is unsecured. So among secured loans, uh, we have the preference, and we sought uh, RBI whether we can do gold loan there. And these branches are in, in, in such a geography that there is no. Competition between the parent and the subsidiary. So that's the okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, in which geography Ashirwad is uh, strong, where Manapuram is not present uh, for the gold loan? See, in a country like India, where one sixth of the world population are living, and the, the Middle income growth is growing, and even the, the bottom line, they are, they are also growing. There is an opportunity to have so many branches. So there are many uh, unserved places uh, in India. And the uh, Ashirwal uh, yeah, is taking that as an opportunity to go longer. Yeah. And the next, uh, um, to, uh, as I mentioned, 20% of the balance sheet as uh, loan of any secured nature or whatever. Okay. So you are saying that conflict of interest will not come uh, even if Ashirwad is uh, listed separately in the uh, future? Yeah, yeah. There is plenty of opportunity. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shubranchu Mishra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, I have two questions. When you're talking about this 8% uh, gold loan growth, what would be the split that should come from South India versus non-South geographies? And second, just take uh, the question on the income at a concern level and forward. Uh, given the fact that we're doing these household pr uh, products, do we have uh, certain KRAs which are assigned to the sales of these household products at the MFI branches for uh, employees? Thanks. The, the opportunity is there across India. And India is annually importing around 1,000 tons of gold. The opportunity is there. And some quarters we will see some geography is growing. Other quarters are in other geographies. All these are dependent upon the conditions, the, like uh, harvest season or festival season in different geographies. About the re income, yeah, the, these are um, sold to MFI customers who wanted to buy household articles, etc. So these, these are, the advantage for them is, these are delivered to them at a price much lower than the MRP. And they are happy about it. And depending upon the need in different geographies, different categories of customers, around, we have around 20 plus products. So from there, we are getting an income a commission from the supplier. And of course I say, yeah, this is from the, at a discount much lower than the market, much higher, discount higher than the market, that is um, price much lower than the market. About KRA, yeah, the employees will have some incentive. It is, uh, yeah, it is normally given. This uh, 
what we call it as product sale is of the sale of uh, consumer durable so this is there the yamaha industry for a very long time and most of the companies provide this service to its customer So this first question is not very clear, sir, because uh, it's been almost uh, close to two years that we're not giving out the uh, regional AUM max. Our South uh, AUM is uh, was upwards of 60% as of third quarter FY22. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we don't have a, a number because we have not been publishing it for the last two years for some reason, I guess. Then uh, having said that, uh, South should really weigh on our growth, right? If it is upwards, even upwards of 50%. So that, that's the specific question I'm asking. Uh, what would be the South versus non-South growth? So I understand that India has a large geography and we have a large opportunity, but my, I have a very specific question: the South versus non-South, if we can start that. Thanks. So you know, around 65% of the branches are in our in South. And 35% is in the non-South. So what I said is, the growth in these places are cyclical, depending upon the festivals in various geographies. So the harvest season in different geographies, climatic conditions in different geographies. It is, it is going like that. If you want to have the data, yeah, we can share with you. Over the last few quarters. Uh, it doesn't answer my question as much, but I shall I'll take this offline. Thank you. Thank you for your time. So thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of uh, Jigar Jani from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, I just wanted to understand uh, on your consolidated financial results, there are three line items. One is net gain on fair value changes. Second is net gain on de recognition financial instruments. And third is a fee other income line item. So I believe you are uh, reporting the DA uh, in the net gain on de recognition of financial instruments. Is that correct? Hello? Hello, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, one minute, one minute. Sure. Yeah, so uh, this is on a uh, trending of a DA income that uh, uh, 82 crore for the half year. And uh, 64 crores in the uh, 82 crore for this uh, half of the year, and last year it was 64.55. So that is the DA uh, uh, income, right? Upfronting. Yes. And what is the net gain on de recognition of financial instruments then? 42 crores? So the bifurcation we will send to you, uh, like based on the index accounting. Uh, so I, I will share with you. Sure, sure. No worries. And uh, this um, product selling that you do, uh, so this is, you don't give any loans for it, right? This is a straight sale and you just get commission, right? Or do you give loans also for buying these products? We grant the loan for the purchase of this product, this uh, yes, consumer durable. And what would be that quantum of the AU right now? Could you share the number? Three fifty crore. Three hundred and fifty. Three hundred and fifty crores. Okay, and ma'am, uh, I know uh, Ashirwad, you cannot comment on specific numbers, but just directionally, has stage two numbers for Ashirwad gone up this quarter sequentially compared to last quarter? We will not be able to comment. Okay, no worries. Thank you so much for answering my questions. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of uh, Mr. Abhidi, Abhijit Tebewal. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, so just just last two questions. One is, I mean, uh, I think earlier some participants had asked that uh, 
one of your larger peers is seeing some stress in golu so they say stress they are seeing their stage 2 stage 3 numbers go up for the last maybe 2 3 quarters um, are we also seeing something similar in our golu portfolios uh, i mean customers not being able to kind of come back repay and take their gold jewelry back So we we don't see any uh, say, yeah twelve um, uh, stage two stage three in gold loan. Got it, got it. And and one last question for uh, Radhu sir. Uh, sir, we've already seen uh, gold loan yields improve to twenty two point one percent now. We've in the past always indicated that gold loan yields will be between twenty two twenty two and a half. So fair to assume that. Uh, gold loan yields will now stabilize, or is there uh, some more room for increase in yields, or maybe next one or two quarters? Okay. Yeah, we expect that to remain uh, somewhere around this range. Got it. Got it. That that's all from my side. Over to you, sir. Yeah. One data point which uh, I was missed out to the earlier participants. Uh, so these two line item uh, in consolidation, uh, the fourth one, net gain on fair value changes, that is uh, relating to Asher worth. Uh, so 27 crore in uh, Q2, FI 24, and um, uh, in June it was 55 crore. And the next line item uh, is by Manabra Finance Limited, uh, 37 crore in this quarter and the 5 crore in the uh, previous quarter. Thank you so much. We would take that as our last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. So thank you all the participants for this analyst meet, analyst call. We expect your support. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Motilal Oswal Financial Services Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.